What's up, ladies and gentlemen? This is Trevi. Welcome back to Tactical Tortoise, and it's time for another 40K battle report, this time with the new Imperial Fists. So with the new Imperial Fist coming out, I decided to, to put my White Scars list with all the cool repulsors and the vehicles on the back burner. The repulsors do have a pretty serious damage output, so depending on how the deployment and the mission setup go, there is a potential that they could alpha strike a lot of an Imperial Fist uh, army off the table. But Imperial Fists do bring a lot of the armor crack needed to kill the repulsors, so I'm going to leave them at home for a little bit. So today I'm playing a pretty foot-focused Imperial Fist list. Uh, not a lot of vehicles in there, not a lot of big tanks, but a lot of dudes in the ground. The list does have three detachments, two battalions, and a spearhead. I tried to fit it into a brigade, but unfortunately I wasn't quite able to fit the exact combination of units that I wanted. Uh, and the points just ended up being a little bit awkward, so I did break it down into these three detachments. I ended up losing one CP, but I think the list works a little bit better for it. In my first attachment, I have a Captain in Phobos armor. He's going to get upgraded to the Chapter Master and get the Vox Spiritum Relic so that he has a 9-inch full reroll bubble instead of just a 6-inch one, which is pretty good. He's also got a Lieutenant with an Auto Bolt Rifle tagging around with him. I have two Infiltrator squads. I think these guys are going to be important for the Imperial Fist faction because there's tending to be a lot of bricking in the list that I'm building. Uh, you have a lot of indirect fire things that can just sit on the corner of the board and you know really hammer your opponent. Uh, and keeping those reserve units from being able to, you know, just deep strike into onto them and, and really blow them up is going to be a big deal. So I think infiltrators and potentially eliminators with the uh, the special carbine on the sergeant are going to be pretty good. I also have a 10-man bolt rifle intercessor squad. I do love me some intercessors, and with the exploding uh, sixes trait for the Imperial Fist, that's going to be awesome. I have the ability to upgrade the list to a specialist detachment in Dominus Crusaders so I can get the gray shield crimson fists double exploding sixes, but I think with just one unit of intercessors, it's probably not worth it. I also have three Invictor Tactical Warsuits with uh, the twin iron hail auto cannons. Uh, those guys are going to be putting out some pretty solid damage since they have so many heavy weapons on them, so they're all going to get plus one damage against vehicles in the Devastator Doctrine. And uh, last but not least in this detachment, I have one Suppressor Squad and two Eliminator Squads. Uh, those are all just with the Bolt Sniper Rifles, and they're just to add some additional indirect firepower. In the 2nd Battalion, I have another Captain with a, a Jump Pack, Storm, Shield, and Thunder Hammer. Just a classic Smash Cap to go run around and hit stuff. Unfortunately, Imperial Fists don't have many good uh, Relic or Warlord trait combinations to make the Smash Cap really sing, uh, like uh, White Scars or potentially Iron Hands do. But I think he is going to be useful in there just to sit back, have a, a, the 6-inch reroll ones or is pretty good. He can protect my indirect fire artillery options in the back uh, or potentially move forward if I'm the beatdown list and, uh, you know, hit some people with a hammer. I also have a librarian in there. He's, uh, you know, just kind of doing his thing. He's got null zone, which is a, a pretty big deal. There's going to be a lot of invulnerable saves that'll be tough for this list. I think that's good, a good tool to have. And then might of heroes can buff up the smash captain or one of the other characters. There are three scout squads in that list as well, just to add some CP and some board presence. Last again, but certainly not least, I have a spearhead detachment with a chaplain. He's got a power fist and a jump pack. I do like the power fist on the chaplain. It does get him over that threshold of strength. Eight. Uh, with Mantra of Strength, if you decide to give that to him, then he can get all the way up to the Dizzying Heights of Strength 10. And that is pretty good. That's a pretty good slaplin without having to spend the CP on getting the Crozius. That detachment also has three Thunderfire Cannons. So uh, pretty uh, pretty simple right there. Uh, not a lot of uh, subtlety in that detachment. Uh, three Thunderfire Cannons. Pretty sweet. Ignore Line of Sight. Two damage in the Devastator Doctrine. Minus two. Ignore Cover. It's just a massive amount of damage going out from those guys. There's a lot of stealthy successor chapters going around that are always in cover, and those uh, Thunderfire cans are really going to rip them up. Plus, they can sink a ton of damage into vehicles if they need to, just, you know, rolling fives to wound with the reroll ones from the lieutenant nearby. You can potentially make a second character into a lieutenant to babysit those guys with the Eye of Hypnoth uh, relic as well. Uh, so I think, altogether, the list uh, makes a pretty good gun line. It essentially has a bunch of indirect fire units that are going to sit out of line of sight. It has a lot of advanced deploying infantry to take table presence, to jump on objectives, and to block for the characters. And then uh, it has the Invictor Warsuits as well, which with the plus one damage from the Devastator Doctrine are going to be doing a significant amount of damage against vehicles. 
So my opponent for this game is going to be, like I said, Adeptus Mechanicus, but really it's going to be sort of an Imperial Soup list. I am calling it Adeptus Mechanicus because it does have an Adeptus Mechanicus detachment and a Questor Mechanicus Imperial Knight detachment as well. It has a Battalion detachment of Grya Forge World Ad uh, Admech Boys. Um, including Daedalosus, a uh, Tech Priest Dominus, and a Tech Priest Manipulus. Those guys have, we have a Transonic Cannon on the Manipulus and a Macro Stubber and Volkite Blaster on the Dominus. Uh, those guys just to buff, you know, sort of the, the backline uh, shooters in the list. Speaking of shooters, we have a unit of six Cataphron Destroyers split right down the middle with three uh, Heavy Grav Cannons and three Plasma Culverins. Rounding out that detachment, we have just four Little Sir Servitor man's hanging out in the back. Those guys are going to be fueling the Servitor Maniple ability to rebuild uh, Cataphrons from their corpses. Cataphrons themselves are going to have the stratagem on them to increase their saving throws by one. That drops them from a 6 plus invulnerable save down to a 5 plus, which is going to be important because there is going to be a lot of minus 2 and 3 shooting on my end. So I think that was a good call on my opponent's part. The just toughness 5 and not an amazing save on those Cataphron Destroyers mean that they will be taking a lot of damage from my indirect fire. The second detachment in this list is going to be Astro Militarium uh, of the Catachin Regiment. Uh, we have uh, Iron Hand Strachan in there, as well as a Primaris Psyker. Uh, the Psyker is going to take the Death Mask of Alanius. That will give her a 4 plus invulnerable save, which with the uh, Psychic Barrier, I think, uh, Psychic Power, she can increase to a 3 plus, which is going to be a pretty big deal to survive against the Eliminators that I have on my team. Uh, there's also three Infantry Squads, two of them with Grenade Launchers in that detachment a uh, minister and priest with a chain sword a manticore uh, with storm eagle rockets as well as a valkyrie with a last cannon uh, that valkyrie is going to hang out with one of those inf infantry squads and the two buffing characters uh, strachan and the minister and priest and that will be you know it's pretty serious sort of uh aggressive team those guys you know throw out a ton of attacks they have plus two attacks each they can attack twice with strachan in there strachan himself is a beast especially against space marines primarily Space Marines that he can just one shot with his uh, big old fist. So I think it's a pretty good deal. The Valkyrie is a little fragile, so I don't know how much I love that, but uh, those guys are going to be, you know, jetting up the table and grabbing objectives in my back line pretty early. The real question is whether I can keep them off my Thunderfire cannons, because I think in order to win the game, I'm going to be have to shooting. I'm going to be having to shoot those Thunderfire cannons every turn. Last but certainly not least. Uh, we have a Imperial Knight Detachment. Like I said, Quester Mechanicus. It's going to be House Tyrannus, so that is the 6 plus feel no pain against uh, non-mortal wounds. And uh, they can, for 3 CP, you can uh, potentially jump back up on your feet after you get taken out uh, in a phase. That detachment consists of two Armager Warglaives. Yeah, that is Warglaives, not Helverins, which is interesting. They have uh, the big old melt lance as well as a melt gun on the top. And a Knight Warden with the Avenger Gatlin Cannon, which is, of course, going to be upgraded to Endless Fury uh, to, you know, get a bunch of extra hits and be super cool. As well as a, uh, you know, Chainsword and an Icarus Auto cannon on its top hull gun. The objective that we're playing today is going to be the ITC mission Crucible of Champions. So as you can see, we have five objectives on the table there. Uh, each one of those obviously can be held as long as you have uh, more models on top of it than your opponent. Uh, holding a point at the end of your turn gives you one victory point and killing anything during your turn gives you a victory point. At the end of each round, whoever will ho uh, holds more objectives will get an additional victory point and likewise whoever kills more will get an additional victory point. You can score a bonus point each round if you have three characters on different objectives. Now, the way this mission works for deployment is that uh, whoever uh, essentially goes first deploys all their models and then um, decides whether or not to take the first turn. My opponent did win that role and uh, decided to go first. We did, uh, talking about the terrain real quick, we were playing with the ITC rules. So all of the big buildings are considered ruins and the bottom level of them blocks line of sight. Uh, the two big runway things that we have in each deployment zone, we decided to call those craters because they're all blown up and stuff and have you know big uh, cargo containers and, and debris littering them. Um, thought it was a pretty cool looking table. In terms of the secondary objectives that we chose I started with Big Game Hunter so that would give me a victory point every time I destroyed a vehicle with seven or more wounds. I also took Kingslayer targeting the uh, Warden. Last but not least I had Headhunter. Uh, less sure about this one but I did have the two units of Eliminators to pick off some characters if I needed to. I assumed some of my opponent's characters would be pretty aggressive especially 
especially Strachan and his Ministorum Priest there. And typically as the game winds down, I can usually grab a couple characters. My opponent also took Headhunter. He's also got behind enemy lines, uh, which he'll score if he starts uh, his round, his turn with a, a unit completely in my deployment zone. And then last but not least, Butcher's Bill. So that'll score anytime uh, my opponent's able to kill two or more units in a turn. Now going first, my opponent did uh, deploy first, like I said, and decided to sink most of his deployments into the building on the top right-hand side of the screen there that would be on his left flank. He's decided to put all of his uh, Cataphron Breachers behind it, or some Destroyers, excuse me, as well as the Night Warden sort of over on that flank as well. He has one Armager Warglaive uh, on each side of the table, one near the Ruin on the top uh, left, and one on the other side of the Ruin on the top right, so way over on the flank there, uh, with the Valkyrie in the middle, able to go basically where anywhere it wants to on the table. Infantry kind of scattered around. He's got a unit of Imperial Guardsmen in the Valkyrie, one on each flank, as well as one Skatari Ranger unit on each flank, too. Just hanging out in Ruins, ready to snipe some people with their big old Transuranic Archibiuses. On my end, because I was able to see where my opponent deployed, I uh, was able to counter-deploy him. I mean, a big part of the game is going to be denying those cataphrons as uh, long to shoot as possible, because they are going to be able to take out almost anything in my army with one round of shooting, and I would like to delay that as much as physically possible. Um, so I deployed most of my army in the ruin on the bottom left-hand side of the screen there, so sort of mirrored uh, for my opponent's deployment. I have all of my eliminators in that ruin, as well as some of my infiltrators and a lot of my characters. The Thunderfire cannons are going to be deployed behind it. They couldn't quite have the deployment to, to go into it. Uh, and obviously being vehicles, going into it means they can never leave, which is probably fine, but I don't know. It's uh, kind of annoying. I have the Invictor Warsuits kind of all over the table. The two, you can see two there that are hiding behind the wall in the center. Uh, it is able to block line of sight to them, so they're going to huddle down behind there. And one off the screen, way off to the right. Uh, he's mostly back there just to get out of line of sight, but I assume um, that he's going to be able to get some pretty good shots off early game. So the first turn begins. My opponent roars forward pretty quickly with all of his big old titans stomping down the table. Um, I did make sure to deploy my scouts very aggressively. They were going to be just nine inches off my opponent's deployment zone and chained into as many ruins as possible. So I would have a, a scout, you know, three or so inches from a ruin, and then the entire unit of five chained all the way uh, across as long as I could. And that was to physically stop my opponent's big uh, walkers from moving close enough to charge my invictors. Uh, both uh, the armager on my side of the table as well as the uh, warden were going to be probably need nine or ten inch charges to get into my invictors getting around the ruins because, remember, they themselves can't move through ruins, uh, even though the infantry can. Between that and my opponent uh, you know, being able to uh, kind of refuse to flank deployment my opponent he wasn't really able to get quite the uh you know advantage position that he wanted to on the first turn he was able to kill all of those units by the end of the round but because there were so many ruins interspersed between them wasn't able to focus enough firepower on any one scout squad to wipe them out in the shooting phase i had a unit of or a single scout actually holding up an armager halverin um, on the left hand side of the table and in the center i also had another scout who was holding up the knight warden i did to, to, to be fair i did spend two cp on prepared position strategy so I was, everyone was in cover. They were all having three up uh, armor saves, which did help keep them alive because my opponent didn't have a lot of uh, the Cataphron Breachers and a lot of the other guys weren't able to get line of sight and a lot of those models just spent their time advancing. That said, while I was able to stop the Knights from getting into combat with me, which was awesome. Uh, my opponent was able to shoot, obviously kill all those scout squads. Um, so I had only one scout squad left and shoot down one Invictor uh, with the Endless Fury. Now back to my turn. I was able to reciprocate pretty devastatingly. My opponent, obviously, because I deployed relatively defensively and my opponent wasn't quite able to clear me out as, as quickly as he wanted to, I was able to, you know, keep the majority of my force alive through his first turn and then uh, force him to move aggressively forward so I was going to be able to get some good shots shots. That's kind of one thing I'm learning about 40k, that going second actually isn't that bad. A lot of people, you know, talk about it being a first turn game, um, but assuming you have enough terrain on the table, you can try to, to play a list that works very defensively. Then going second, you know, you have the ability to score at the end of the round, which is a lot more powerful than the first player going. Plus, a lot of times, the if the first player has a lot of direct line of sight uh, shooting, 
they're going to have to move aggressively forward to move into line of sight and usually will have to expose themselves a lot more than you will. Um, so while their first turn is going to be, you know, pretty devastating and they're going to kill some models that it won't get to act during the game, they you will be able to respond and usually, uh, you know, kill more during their turn than they killed of yours. In this game in particular, uh, I, you know, just started lev leveling shots into uh, the Night Warden and the Armager Helverin that were on my side of the table. Uh, I was able to deal significant damage to the Night Warden, I, you know, Dropped it down to um, probably five or ten wounds left. Wasn't confident enough in killing it in melee with an Invictor Warsuit that I actually didn't charge in. My Intercessor Squad was received the Catechism of Fire from the Chaplain, turned around, and with some help from the characters, were able to just uh, straight up kill the Valkyrie um, and force all the Guardsmen inside to bail out. That was pretty good. I did have to use the Rapid Fire Stratagem to double the number of shots they had. Lastly, my Smash Captain was actually able to take out the Armager Helfrin that was, uh, you know, coming and hanging out on my side of the table. He was right up against the Ruin Wall, so my Smash Captain was able to charge through, kill him, and uh, use the Consolidate move to get back behind out of line of sight to hopefully live to fight another day. That was one reason that I decided not to charge into the Warden. I was going to have to probably fight first with that Captain to keep him alive against the Helfrin, and if my opponent was able to interrupt on either one of those models, he could kill them pretty easily. That, at the end of the round, uh, unfortunately leaves us tied on kills, but my opponent is able to hold more objectives uh, just by virtue of, of, you know, sort of claiming the, the majority of the table. But I do get a lot of points on Kingslayer as well as a big game hunter point or two big game hunter points for uh, destroying the Valkyrie and the Armager. So round two begins. I did make a little bit of a mistake during my turn. When the Guardsmen bailed out of the Valkyrie, I opted to charge them with the Intercessors and the Chaplain that was over there. Uh, my opponent decided to uh, you know, pile out pretty close to the Intercessors, so I was able to make that charge even through the Crater uh, and was able to wipe those guys out. But I opted not to engage Strachan, which was a little bit of a mistake because... Um, Strachan was able to intervene into me. I think he might have killed the chaplain, actually, uh, straight up in, in that combat. But because he wasn't in melee with the intercessors, he didn't have to fall back with anybody. Um, I did try to wrap into the uh, into the, the guardsmen, but they ended up all running away anyway, so it, it, that didn't matter. Um, and that left my intercessors out of line of sight, or in, in line of sight, and, you know, exposed to my opponent's shooting, and he was going to be able to get those cataphron breachers on target on those guys. So, unfortunately, uh, a couple mistakes made there. If I do stay in melee with Strachan, he does have to fall back which means he doesn't get to swing and i think that stops him from killing the chaplain if i remember correctly so my uh my intercessors probably still would have been killed by shooting because they had moved out some out from behind their little crate there um but it does mean that strachan would have had to forgo attacking at all in order to make that happen and i uh, probably keep a chaplain alive all in all, my opponent's turn is pretty straightforward. I did move an Invictor Warsuit into the way of the Night Warden in the center. As you can see there, it is still alive. That is uh, halfway through my opponent's turn. It clearly does not survive uh, <laughs> the end of that turn. The Warden isn't able to move past it, uh, but does end up just absolutely destroying it in melee. His Armager Halverin, the remaining Armager Halverin that's on the, the far right-hand side, is actually on the other side of the Ruin on the top right of the photo, and uh, moves around to attack the Invictor over there. I believe uh, it goes very poorly for that armager. It uh, ends up eating a couple wounds in Overwatch. Um, isn't able to get damage with its melta guns to you know on the way in. Charges uh, doesn't quite kill the Invictor and actually ends up either dying or being mortally wounded in response. I should note also that when my Invictor, uh, my brave little Invictor that was fighting the Night Warden died, it of course exploded and was able to deal a bunch of wounds to the Warden there as well. So take that. Ha <laughs> ha! Now back in my turn, my turn was pretty uneventful actually. I had lost the the use of most of my Invictors. Uh, I believe my Invictor on the far right actually ended up fighting the Armager for another round to be able to kill it. But my Invictor in the center there obviously was squashed by the Warden, leaving the Warden sort of uh, just sort of ominously looming in the middle of the table. I was able to shoot the Warden down. I think I, I piled all the Thunderfire cannon shots into it, as well as uh, the you know a, a bunch of other shots, and was finally able to take it down. I, I had a Smite go from the Librarian. Into to it as well and was finally able to kill it uh you know with all my firepower in there i didn't have a good target for tank hunters unfortunately that's something i'm kind of noticing in this list if i lose too many of the big beefy units everything's so kind of msu that tank hunters isn't really worth it i ended up dropping four cp to put tank hunters onto a thunder fire cannon and then double shoot it uh with suppression fire but I, I wasn't it didn't really do much damage uh even winning on fours with a bunch of wounding rolls um i didn't feel particularly 
really worth it to me, unfortunately. I was able to finally take it out, though. The scout squad on the top there was able to uh, very, very valiantly charge the manticore, which was hiding behind the ruin, um, and just barely make the big, I think it was a, an eight-inch charge to get into melee with it. That would stop it from shooting its second storm eagle rocket, or its third uh, storm eagle rocket shot. My opponent actually opted, because he figured, rightly so, that there was a pretty good chance it would remain in melee for the rest of the game if the scouts just kept chasing it. He actually opted to fire a storm eagle rocket um, in response to the charge as Overwatch. Uh, ended up not killing any scouts with that, though. So fortunately for me, the storm, storm eagle rockets actually were um, really just monumentally terrible uh, during this whole game. <laughs> and so uh, they they kept, uh, you know, hitting eliminators and I would make all the saves because they have a, you know, ridiculous saving cover uh, or he would hit an invictor and the invictor, you know, would just shrug, shrug it off and, and he'd roll, you know, twos, ones and twos for damage and only deal a couple wounds. That said, at the end of round two, my opponent is able to take a commanding lead in the game, even though he's lost his knight and his uh, two armagers, he does, we, we do end up tying on kills again, which is really not helping me out at all. Uh, I get my points for killing and holding and my secondary points for destroying the vehicles, which felt pretty good, but unfortunately my opponent is able to hold more because he's really got um, control of the table right now with his characters on most of the objectives, and because of that, also bonus. So that's a four point turn for my opponent, only two points for me, and I'm, I'm feeling a little worried. I do have a lot of models left on the table, a lot of infantry, and I'm really uh, excited about these Thunderfire cannons that are just going to hammer into my opponent's you know, remaining lighter uh, troops. But unfortunately, my opponent has taken a very uh, early lead in the game, and I'm really going to have to swing back hard in order to uh, change the outcome. So going back to my opponent's turn um, on round three, he's gonna he ends up moving the cataphrons around the edge of those ruins finally to get some line of sight on my models. They end up taking out a thunderfire cannon, which was uh, really sad for me. Um, they, the thunderfire cannons are uh, pretty tanky. They're toughness six. They have a two up save. Typically they're in cover, but unfortunately only four wounds on those guys and the uh, plasma guns off of the uh, the plasma culverins off of the um, off of the uh, the cataphrons it, it really take them out very easily. The Grav guns, I think, turned around and fired into the remaining Invictor. We're able to take him out as well, so I've lost all of my vehicles, and my opponent's really dominating the center of the table with that big old Cataphron unit. Uh, that said, I was able to use my snipers to pick off his uh, servitors, so he wasn't... He, I think he was only able to rebuild one Cataphron this game uh, after the Thunderfire cannons hammered into him for a while. The Manticore on the top uh, ended up falling back away from the scouts. Unfortunately, he wasn't able to shoot that round, but did end up getting away from them for another turn. Because there are only five scouts in that unit there isn't really a chance that i'm going to be able to wrap the tank at all so I'm, I'm hoping to just tag it and stop it from shooting that last rocket as well as it heavy it's heavy bolter and get that extra movement on the scouts because there isn't a lot remaining in my opponent's backfield uh, my random bolter shots and and uh you know thunder fires and stuff were able to take out all of the skatari rangers and uh my infiltrators were able to really hammer in on my opponent's imperial guard infantry so there is one squad left that was sitting in the building uh on the top right from the start of the game but the rest of his infantry are taken out uh, and he's really down to that unit and the breachers left holding the center of the table we do, over the course of a couple rounds, have a very silly fight between the rem remaining Imperial Guard characters and my characters that are over on my objective in my deployment zone. I was able to uh, obviously take out the infantry that were there pretty early and deal a bunch of damage to both the Ministorm Priest and Colonel Strachan. Uh, Colonel Strachan is the gray model in the front there. The priest is the, is the white one uh, towards the back with the robes. Unfortunately, it wasn't <laughs> quite able to take them out uh, with a, a bunch of different attacks into them. They ended up just tanking so much damage damage. I was able to get my uh, librarian up in there with his big old four staff. He smited Colonel Strachan to death, charged into the Minister and Priest, who promptly made all of her invulnerable saves and survive. And those two uh, remained in, in melee. I think the librarian had been at one wound after an early perils for almost the entirety of the game. The priest wasn't able to get any wounds through on it, and the priest ended up just making a ton of its invulnerable saves and just refusing to die. Unfortunately, scoring my opponent behind enemy lines for staying in my deployment zone for so long uh, and was able to, to, to get my opponent a couple points there. Uh, really frustrated that I wasn't able to take that guy out, but it was a very silly uh, interaction. Now, with the number of guns that I had pointed at my opponent's breachers, I was feeling pretty good about where I was in attrition at this point. But unfortunately, at the end of round three, my opponent gets another big turn and is able to score four points to my two once again. We tie on kills for the third turn in a row. My opponent is able to hold more objectives and a bonus point because they have so many characters all over the table. Very unfortunate for me, and I'm really racking my brains at how I can come back from this you know, early deficit of two four-point turns in a row. But let's see how it goes. 
So as turn four rolls around, we start sort of playing a really cagey game of Warhammer. I was able, like I said before, to take out all the servitors, so my opponent wasn't able to bring back his uh, destroyers. And I started hammering into the destroyers with a lot of my strength five shooting. I had all of those uh, six eliminator shots as well as the Thunderfire cannon shots into those guys. And was able to take about, out about half the unit in a round of shooting. In response, they killed a Thunderfire cannon, but I was able to take out the rest of the unit uh, with all my big guns there. Now, this is sort of my favorite stage of the game. Every little movement is very important, and all of the target priority and exactly how you sequence your attacks is very important, and it was really an exciting part of the game for me coming down to this, uh, you know, this late stage. At this point, all of my infiltrators in one unit had been destroyed. All of my scouts were hanging out by the manticore on the back of the table, just tying him up, stopping him from shooting his last rocket. And I had an, another infiltrator unit that had moved into the center that was relatively unscathed and was fighting the guardsmen in the middle there. Now, my opponent is left with, essentially, besides those guardsmen and the Manticore, just his characters, uh, I was able to snipe out his Primaris Psyker the turn before by shooting. Uh, it, 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 she had survived by putting Psychic Barrier on herself for a turn against the Eliminators, but they were able to take her out the, the turn afterwards. And I've started to move up my Tech Marines. As their Thunderfire Cannons get shot to death, the Tech Marines like slowly uh, kind of daisy chain out up the table um, to shoot all their guns. They do have some pretty serious shooting. They have a plasma pistol uh, equivalent uh, with their plasma cutter on their backpack as well as a flamer all assault weapons so they can uh, advance and shoot them um, and they're just moving up killing some infantry and hoping uh, to to get into melee with their big servo arms now fortunately for me uh, at the bottom of turn four there the, the game does start going in my favor i just have such an immense sort of castle of Im uh, powerful guns in the corner here with all the sniper rifles from the eliminators as well as the thunderfire cannon really just putting a bunch of shots down range they are able to take out the remaining infantry and start dealing damage to the characters. I end up killing off one of the two characters, either the the, the Manipulus or the other guy. I forget which one's which. I, I'm able to kill him off with, I think, a combination of the Smash Captain and the Infiltrators fighting him. The Smash Captain ends up turning around and goes and blows up the Manticore with his Thunder Hammer to really just put that thing out of its misery and grab me my last big game hunter. And towards the end of the game, I'm able to take out the remaining Ad Mech characters and leave, I believe, Datalosis and one unit of Scutarii Rangers hanging out on my opponent's objective that's on the far right hand side of the table. That's sort of a quick recap of the last couple of turns of the game but turn four I'm able to score a pretty big turn I'm able to get three points to my opponent's two not a huge turn but I am turning the tide turn five is a big one like I said I blew up the uh, Manticore and was able to get between that guy my librarian on the objective in my deployment zone who was finally able to kill the Minister of Priest that he was attacking, um, and I was able to put my uh, Chapter Master on the left-hand objective. That scored me a bonus point for a five-point turn, turn five. And as the game went down, uh, my opponent was able to hold an objective um, and I believe kill a unit, and I was able to uh, get a four-point turn for kill, kill more, hold more. At the end of the game, we tallied up the secondary objectives, and I had maxed mine out. I had killed enough of the characters uh, to max out my headhunter, and the big game hunter, obviously, I killed all the tanks that weren't the titan, so I was able to get that. And my opponent, unfortunately, did score uh, uh, two, uh, three behind enemy lines for his uh, Imperial Guardsmen just hanging out for way too long um, in the in my deployment zone there but unfortunately fell down pretty hard on butcher's bill was able to score butcher's bill pretty early on but because they were forced to take out my squishy targets uh like my scouts very early uh, I was left with more of the multi-wound, you know, Primaris models. And as the Cataphron Breachers and the Knights were taking out, then uh, he ran out of the, the real beef that he needed to take those guys, uh, to kill those guys. Unfortunately, uh, you know, Skatarii Rangers don't really deal a ton of damage to infiltrators and typically end up uh, losing that fight in the end. So with his big early game leads, a couple four-point turns in a row there, my opponent was able to score 25 points out of that game, really losing out on the last two turns. He lost a lot of points uh, because he was starting to lose control of objectives and lost a couple points on the secondary objectives. And on my end, I was able to pull it out with a 29-point win. Uh, so that left the final score at 29 for the Imperial Fists, 25 for the Adeptus Mechanicus. Overall, a super exciting game. I was actually really excited to make a report for this one uh, because it, it did sort of come down to the wire there. Towards the end, 
I wasn't sure where the game was going to go. Uh, my opponent had so many early leads, it was really a question of whether my little castle was going to be able to pull it back out, and my opponent really did make a, a, a big fight of it. But fortunately, I had enough beef, uh, you know, hanging out in my indirect fire that hadn't been taking much damage uh, until, you know, towards the end of the game where my opponent was able to uh, start killing my thunder fires eventually. Uh, it had been, you know, taken enough turns of shooting that I was able to sort of pull that attrition advantage into a win. Now, I do think I made some mistakes. I definitely made some sequencing mistakes on my assault phase, fighting Strachan. I lost my chaplain for no reason, which I keep doing, and I uh, should probably just stop putting my chaplain in melee until he really needs to be because he keeps dying by accident, but yeah, that's mostly on me. I think if I had not pulled my smash captain back, I had actually moved him back into the ruin after I destroyed the armager Helverin that w or the armager warglaive, excuse me, that was uh, sort of threatening my side of the table. Then I think he he was able to maintain a very powerful presence in the center and potentially knock off a couple of my opponent's characters when they tried to to swing in and, and take him out. I was kind of worried about my opponent's sniper weapons, but I ended up being able to kill those guys pretty easily. And the arquebuses uh, that were on my opponent's far uh, you know right side of the table weren't really going to be in an area to get line of sight to him to shoot at him. Not to mention that he has a storm shield, so you know, he has a pretty good chance of striking those shots off anyway. Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this battle report. Please let me know what you think in the comments. Uh, remember to like and subscribe and do all that YouTube stuff. I am pretty excited about uh, Imperial Fists. I'm not super excited about the, the current list. I think it's fine. I like all of the indirect fire. I think it's, you know, it's fun to shoot and it does a lot of damage. But I'm really excited to play the infantry. I think a, a list with a lot of infantry and characters as well, it being backed up by that powerful shooting, is going to be super fun to play. Not 100% sure that it's the most optimal choice in the entire world. But all of the exploding sixes, rolling a whole bajillion strength four, uh, you know, minus a bunch bolter shots, it's going to be sweet. I like, you know, playing the assault phase and being able to move up the table and really get into melee is something that um, I've been playing around a little bit with uh, in Space Marine so far, but I haven't really uh, been able to explore to its fullest. Anyway, once again, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Please have a wonderful day and happy war hammering, everyone.